Madam, Ms. Sylvia Lim expressed concern about the independence of MND, in fact, the appropriateness and independence of MND as a regulator for town councils. She says the new enforcement powers of the Town Councils Act are too wide-ranging and may be wielded as a political tool because the head of the ministry is a political office holder. These are serious allegations, quite unwarranted, and perhaps are indicative of the worldview from which the Workers' Party comes from, that when a political entity and a, political, a politician gets into power, there is no trust in his integrity, there is no trust in the voter. He must be checked, fettered, locked up, chained, that you need ombudsman for every aspect of his work, especially when it relates to issues that may pertain to the politics of the land. First, let, me, let us all go back to fundamentals, and Mr Singh and Ms Lim are both lawyers and will understand this. When a government is elected by the people, Political office holders will helm the executive arm and be responsible for all the ministries and agencies, including those that have law enforcement, regulatory and licensing powers, the police, the National Environment Agency, CPIB, IRAS, and so on. And we are not unique in that sense. We are not a unique system to do this. And with a parliamentary majority, government can and is obliged to make laws in the public interest. But, Madam, these powers and the laws that are made have to be used judiciously, fairly, justifiably, and even-handedly. In the case of the Town Councils Act, they have to be applied across all town councils, regardless of political affiliation. Even the Prime Minister's Town Council, when allegations were made, they took the first step to make a report, and now CBIB is investigating Amokyo Town Council. Is there an allegation? or claim that the officers of the, town count of the CPIB will fear investigating Amokyo Town Council? Are they timorous souls? I fear that allegation goes a bit too far. Because these powers, Madam, are derived from the people and given with their trust and confidence. Trust and confidence are fragile things. There is no sweeping of things under the carpet. Our history has shown that this government this party will act against wrongdoing, will not sweep things under the carpet. The recent Amakyo Town Council case is a case in point. Madam, where prosecutions are instituted, as is envisioned possibly under the Town Council's Act, where there's wrongdoing, there is also the Office of the Public Prosecutor who decides if charges should be filed, and the judiciary who decides if these should stand. Mr Singh and Ms Lim call for the appointment of independent persons. But these so-called independent ombudsmen or independent accountants have to be appointed by somebody, somebody vested with the authority to take charge of the matter, somebody responsible for the policy of the issue. So will the allegations of bias and partisanship really ever end? Let us look what, at what happened thus far for the AHTC saga or AHPETC saga. The whistle was first blown by AHPETC's own external auditors in 2011. The audit, the subsequent audit was carried out by the Auditors General's Office, an independent audit office, which Ms Lim referred to in her speech. It made very serious findings about mismanagement, improper payments, conflict of interest, poor record keeping, and internal processes. Equally serious conclusions were drawn by the judiciary, both the High Court and the Court of Appeal, when the matter was brought to court in 2015. Pursuant to a court order, AHTC appointed KPMG, who came out with an independent report with serious allegations of possible civil and criminal liability. And now at HDB's request, firm request, I may say so, and confirmed through a court order by the Court of Appeal, AHTC has delegated decision-making on recovery of losses and further action to an independent panel comprising Mr. Philip J. Ratnam, Mr. N. Srinivasan and Mr. Ong Pang Thai, three eminent professionals. With the amendments to the Town Councils Act, 
none of these avenues and options will be abrogated. I certainly hope Mr Singh and Ms Lin do not also dispute the fairness and independence of these platforms. In fact, for the purposes of compliance reviews and investigations under the bill, MND can similarly appoint an independent auditor or independent panel as inspectors to carry out the review. These inspectors, as I've said in my opening speech, must report to both MND as regulator and the town council for over whom the review or investigation is being carried out. In most instances, consistent with the political philosophy underlying town councils, we expect that the town council will, in a light touch scenario, on their own accord, resolve the issues identified by the inspectors promptly. If so, MND will not need to step in to issue any rectification order. But in any event, MND's rectification order can only reflect what the Town Council ought to have done in the first place and will not require the Town Council to, to take any action over and above what is necessary to bring the Town Council into compliance with the Town Council's Act and its subsidiary legislation. Madam, in the Town Council's Amendment Bill, there is Section 43A on compliance reviews or health checks, and Section 43B on investigations. When investigation needs to be carried out, MND is prepared to appoint independent auditors and professionals to carry out investigations, and they will then have to report both to MND and the Town Council as required by law. Having said all this, perhaps let us go back and ask, what really is AHTC's position on regulatory oversight? Is it, as I said earlier, a cynical fear that people who step up into politics and are elected by people into government are to be mistrusted, to be distrusted, that they will, in full glare of public, misuse laws? Or is it really the case that Ms Lim is concerned about real problems being investigated by MND. But to really know what it is, let us look at what was said in court, recorded by court transcripts. This was when HDB sought the court's intervention in 2015 to appoint an independent auditor to look into AHTC's problems and to take necessary action. We wanted, or HDB applied for the court to oversee this, the court to appoint an auditor, and for this auditor to be an independent auditor, not reporting to HDB or MND, but reporting to court, acting professionally and independently. To our surprise, AHTC fought the application and tried to stop an independent auditor from being appointed by the Supreme Court of Singapore. Their lawyer argued explicitly in court with, the, with his client seated behind him on AHTC's behalf that even if there was mismanagement or misspent funds, their view was that there was nothing that could be done other than through the ballot box. So is it a willingness for appropriate, independent, fair, justifiable regulatory oversight? Or is there a preference for no oversight whatsoever? Madam, MND will and has always exercised its regulatory powers with due care and regard to people and the residents' public interests, as it has always done. Apart from the public's eye, there's always the recourse to the courts under the framework of judicial review. Ours is a system of rule of law, and any abuse of public powers is subject to the jurisdiction of the courts. And I'm sure Mr Singh and Ms Lim understand that very well. <laughs> 